How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I want to bring you along with me because I wanted to talk about the top three things that I wish I knew as a beginner photographer. So let's jump right into it. So now that we're here comfortably, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the top three things. So if you're the type of person that doesn't wanna like wait around, these are the top three things and then I'm gonna get more in depth with them. The first thing is shooting in manual. Second is don't over edit. And lastly, don't compare yourself to anybody else. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is shooting manual. The big thing that I notice a lot of beginner photographers and even myself included is I just kind of trusted the camera to do just everything and not really worked on my own understanding about ISO, shutter speed and the aperture. So one main thing to do is really get through it and just push yourself to really understand it. I mean you're going to make mistakes, you're going to make really obvious mistakes that'll just kind of set you back maybe you didn't get the shot that you wanted or you should have gone or whatever but the problem with just shooting everything auto is you're kind of just not really learning what you're supposed to do for photography i got caught up with just kind of pointing and shooting at the beginning because i didn't really understand what the settings were on my camera with like having priority for like the aperture or the shutter priority or manual mode or just leaving it in full auto so at first it was scary but the good thing about it is that the more you make mistakes the more you learn not to do them again because you want to make sure you get your nice shots so one of my best learning examples was having to get creative for my band for my basically for all my social medias. I didn't really have the budget to bring a photographer with me at all times, so what I needed to do was get better at doing self-portraits and self-photography for myself and for my bandmates. So with that said, it just made me really get out of my comfort zone to really learn and understand more about photography and videography to create content for my own business. So that pushed me to get a little bit better into understanding more of the manual setting because at first I wanted to just take better photos with my camera so I invested in getting a Canon at the time that my dad had really given me most of it for a gift but I wanted to get a camera anyway so I had put some money towards it and I wanted to just really start taking photos more just because it intrigued me. I mean I used them for my phone and I wanted to up my game with quality. So at first it kind of was a little bit horrifying. It just wasn't really working, I guess. I was just getting frustrated. But the best friend that I had was YouTube. It's taught me so many things. There's so many creators out there that put just phenomenal information, literally for free, all on YouTube. So don't be afraid to dive into more information with that on YouTube itself where you can get more understanding about how to shoot manual with your awesome camera. You've already spent a lot of money, so might as well use it to its full potential. So now on the second thing that I wish I knew as a beginner photographer is the not over editing. My biggest thing was I just kept seeing all these photographers just kind of putting their photos and I was like, man, like their edits are so cool. So you see a lot of people with presets and everything like that. I didn't personally buy presets. I just kind of saw them and either watch a lot of tutorials on how to edit and then just kind of relied on just like a one fix wonder kind of preset that I would create for myself. And then I would just use it without understanding more about my white balance or kind of the colors and everything between. So it wasn't as pretty as it could have been. And honestly, it probably ruined a lot more of my shots than I really led to believe. As a beginner photographer, we're kind of naive and we kind of just believe that anything can be fixed just with a one-click wonder, or we hope so at least, so that we can get just better and faster because we're so hungry for knowledge that we just want to get better and compete with the people that are like on the top. So I'm gonna show you a bit of my examples of what my photos look like before and now what they look like to this day. This is my band account where I started kind of taking more photos and learning more about editing for myself and for my band. As you see, the editing isn't so great now that I look back into it. It's a little bit cringe to see how much I kind of started cranking it up where I could have taken more of the time to really understand 
how to better color grade my photos to look more professional and not as cakey as these started turning out, which is not horrible per se, but it is what it is. So these are my easy tie creative early days and how I started getting better and better and slowly understanding more about photography. Still at the beginning, it wasn't anything phenomenal. I started getting more into understanding how to properly set my camera settings and my white balance in the editing and also my color grading just to look a little bit more professional and just get better color that would appease the eye of the beholder and for myself as well to keep growing as an artist and as a photographer and creator so that thought that you know my progress has slowly developed but it's been a great progress to have and I hope that everybody does that as well. Here are a few photos that I took in 2017 once I got my Sony a6000. The color grading isn't horrible, but were presets that I had made myself and I didn't really understand the white balance point. So sometimes it'd be too blue, sometimes it'd be too orange, which obviously kind of made it not look as professional. Now fast forward to 2020, these are a couple of the photos that I've really enjoyed that I've taken so far and my color grading has looked a lot nicer in my opinion and the growth that I've had just by really challenging myself to get more knowledge and just really get creative with my editing style and have some fun with it. So those are my photos that I used to take and edit for my band and just for myself overall. Obviously, uh, now that I look back at them, it's kind of cringe to see, but it's also to see how much I've come from my understanding of photography. I mean, it's pretty cool to see just how much different and how cool I thought these photos were and how professional I thought they were, that I was kind of just not even improving because I just was getting too much in my comfort zone. Instead of trying to like just try out different scenarios of editing and just getting better at editing overall with my understanding. So with that said, my best thing that recently even that I did was get the basics from Short Stash. I've posted a video about it. If you haven't seen it, you should go see it. It's on my channel. But that helped me understand a lot more, which I already had been getting more knowledge, but it was kind of like that you know that thing where like you get solidified in the moment that it's just like you get backed up with like yeah you understand this now because somebody else almost made you realize that you do and gave you an even better understanding of it to kind of feel even more comfortable and confident about it that's what happened with the basics for myself i started understanding more about the color palettes and everything in between to help my editing style so that's how you see my before and afters with the photos you see now it's a little bit more subtle to a certain degree and it just is more pleasing to the eye in my opinion obviously i still have way more to keep learning and growing with my editing style just because i love to just honestly try new things out so that's why i just keep doing it and doing it and trying to make my own presets because eventually i want to get to the point where i can pass that information to more people and keep creating and living off of just making art because it's something that i truly enjoy even if i they essentially don't get paid for it, but just making YouTube videos is something that I truly enjoy. And lastly, we're going to talk about not comparing yourself to others. So with that said, my biggest problem was I always like to compare myself to the biggest Instagrammers with photography and seeing what they were doing and going like, hey, like, how do they have all these followers or what are they doing to get all these followers why do they have these great photos and i don't how do they go to these locations and why can't i and it's that rabbit hole that you just keep falling into it and into it and into it and it really just doesn't help you out at all so for example my biggest thing that i noticed at the beginning is just you start getting hungry for information you start following all these youtubers and instagrammers that do all these cool activities and you're like damn like I want to do that. The reason my photos suck is because I don't get to go to those places. Instead of thinking about, well, how can I get to that p point in my career? Or what did they do to get better to be able to take those kind of photos? I wasn't asking the right questions to really get myself to grow and to really feel like I am getting better at my craft. So one big thing that I decided to do is just stop looking at how big they are and start seeing what are they doing that I can learn from them. So I started seeing like their framing, what kind of angle were 
were they taking the photo, where were they going, and what were they doing with what they had. I mean, you start seeing how much they take photos and videos with almost nothing in a sense of craziness for their creativity in a sense. They just start making it a muscle memory. So that creativity for them, it just keeps making sense because they put it to the test every time. So for me, I decided to start making myself go out and take more photos. Even if they sucked, I could care less if nobody saw them as long as I felt like I was doing something productive. The best thing that's ever happened to me is just literally bringing my camera everywhere that I went, even if it was the most inconvenient thing, just because I wanted to practice my photography and my videography. So that's how I started noticing my growth, just because I started understanding the composition. And even to this day, I want to keep learning better composition to get better shots and challenge myself where there's nothing luxurious of like uh, a touristy kind of style place. Just like how I talked about in my last video about the, the pros and cons about a touristy city or living in a not so touristy town is that you have to challenge yourself to make something look like a million dollars basically so I want to keep doing that with myself because I started comparing myself to others and just I noticed that it was just kind of getting depressing to want to create because it was like well I'm not getting all the followers that they have I'm not getting likes and stuff like that and started understanding that I was focusing on the wrong perspective about photography and why I had fallen in love with it so my biggest advice with that is is do not compare yourself to others and just focus on your growth and how you can keep getting better and better. Hopefully these tips help you out. That's all I want to do with sharing this information. I know I've learned a lot from YouTube, so I really want to keep passing that information on to people just because I want people to just create and enjoy their craft. Don't compare yourself to others. Just trust your gear and learn how to use it. Don't over edit and really understand what you're doing. That's the best thing that I could have learned at the beginning of my career to just really get better at it. But with all that said and done, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Share this video with a friend and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.